Thank you very much, Claire. Greetings, everybody. As Claire said, my name is Tony Caparelli, and I am a Nashville-based lighting designer, lighting programmer, and lighting director. While I like to dabble in many forms of my craft, today I've been invited by my friends from Vectorworks to share how I've adopted GDTF and MVR formats into my lighting design workflow, namely for the Billie Eilish Where Do We Go Tour. This webinar will first focus on the different ways GDTF and MVR can benefit us. Next, I'll share what equipment was used not only by me, but also the other team members I worked with to build the show. Remember, it takes quite a few people to put these things together, so I'm excited to share with you the other minds behind the curtain with me. After that, we will then look at a variety of examples from drafting and rendering. I want to show you how the look of the rig can change when we are trying to fit it in a budget. So when we have to revise things, MVR plays quite a big role when we have to adjust our Vectorworks drawings to update renders. Once the revision process is finished, I'll then show you some pictures and video clips of the final product. I wish there was more content to share, but due to the blow COVID-19 dealt to our industry, we were stopped right when things were getting started on that tour. And finally, I want to express just how important it is for all of us to jump on board with these new formats. Since it's still quite new, we need to stay focused on compiling information for the GDTF database. This is a responsibility we the users and the manufacturers must accept and contribute to as the process continues to grow. So let's dive in, shall we? I wanted to talk about the equipment briefly because obviously we would not be able to truly use GDTF and MVR to its full capability without utilizing specific hardware and software. Over the years, I've tried products to help refine my workflows. My original workflow began with the Vectorworks export plugin to the GrandMA2 and GrandMA3D. At times for me, the plugin and import to the console wasn't always the smoothest. Although it was probably some user error on my part, most of the time adjusting the lighting fixtures XYZ coordinates became a thing for some of my projects. I say this because this is a good reason why MVR is such a commodity for both previs software and the console. The one thing a lot of designers, including myself, look for is a turnkey way to transfer our vision into an accurate 3D environment. GDTF and MVR provide just that. However, my system was starting to become pretty outdated as I was using the Grand MA2 command wing along with MA2 on PC, a MacBook Pro using Windows Boot Camp, and Vectorworks Spotlight 2019. It was time to invest into making my projects more efficient and the production rate quicker. One upgrade to the system pretty much followed after another over the past two years. The first and most expensive component I had to invest in was the Grand MA3 lighting control system. When the console was released and I began to read about the capabilities of MVR and GDTF, I knew I had to have it, as it would become the epicenter not only for my designs, but also programming shows. Next up was the Vectorworks license upgrade. At this time, I only had version 2019, and the MVR and GDTF features in the software were not yet available until the 2020 version. So, that upgrade was a necessity, especially when implementing Vision. Lastly, to complete the puzzle, I needed a workhorse of a computer to handle all the graphics. I had been shopping around forever, and based on the reviews from my peers, Razer laptops were the heavy favorite. One thing that kept the purchase looming, though, was the emergence of the new RTX 3000 series graphics cards. Once they were announced, one of my close colleagues advised me to hold off until they started putting the new cards into the laptops. And I'm glad I did. It was worth the wait. The power and the speed of my computer was well worth the wait. Now that I got my necessities for hardware and software out of the way, Let's dig a little deeper into what MVR and GDTF can do for you. So the big question I asked from the beginning is what can GDTF and MVR do for me? I understood initially that it would be just like using the fixture library and importing a 3D file. What I discovered was so much more than that. When I did my research, I learned that the formats would not only serve my specific workflow, but other types of workflows. These formats are meant to unify our industry 
And that's a pretty powerful statement, considering our databases have been splintered from the very beginning. That is the dream that GDTF wants to achieve. One place we can go, no matter what our console preference is. One place to reference for a fixture instead of looking around different web forums, requesting a console support team member for a build. Think about it. What if you build a fixture profile or the manufacturer submits one to gdtfshare.com? It will benefit multiple platforms instead of just one. For instance, last month I was programming a show on another console that didn't have a good matching profile built yet on their respective library page. What if someone had a GDTF file built for the same fixture they needed from another console? I can use that same profile for my show. The woes for the dreaded fixture profile search and the wait time for the support build would become quite simplified. GDTF is also important for our previs process because the data will include accurate data for the previs program to read fixture traits such as zoom field, color mixing, and even the physical look of the model. We will finally begin to move past our generic looking fixture models and we will see more accurate depictions of the fixtures without having to purchase models from third party websites. I would like to say though, I am very grateful for those sites and what they have contributed to us over the years. Now, let us talk about the MBR format. This particular format allows us to share batches of information much easier. This format focuses of what we export from Vectorworks to visualizers and consoles. MBR will export your fixture IDs, patch, fixture mode, fixture XYZ orientations, etc. While I have been using Vision as of late, there are other programs like Depends2 that accept MBR imports, and in time, I'm sure there will be eventually more programs that will also be able to adopt this format. Anyways, let's crack the surface of the <coughs> award-winning lighting design for the Billie Eilish Where Do We Go Tour, shall we? When Moment Factory asked me to do the lighting design for the tour, I was so honored. Once I viewed the creative deck, I knew their concept would allow me to incorporate some really fun elements in the lighting. In version one of the rig, Moment Factory had an automated square catwalk that Billy could roam around over the stage and the audience at the same time on. I knew first that I had to fill in the open space within the catwalk. I decided to match automation with automation. If the catwalk was to move, why not the trusses as well? This would definitely give us many variables to consider for different song looks with both catwalk and truss formations. Another thing I had to consider is if she was in the air that high, how could I consistently keep Billy lit in the air? Billy was very clear she did not want to be harnessed in while she was in the air. From a safety standpoint, the only other option was to have railings for the catwalk. With the combined effort of Acme Solar Flare Spots and Follow Me serving as the key light and a stair of tubes mounted on the catwalk rails for an additional key light source as well as lighting effects, it kept Billy well lit up there. Now, as we know, production budgets can make us adapt from time to time. As discussions progressed, we had to cut back the production to fit the realistic budget. Once we finalized everything, it was time to move forward with the design. As you can see, the process has not only changed structurally, but the fixtures as well. When we normally head into making a lighting design, we have the latest and greatest in mind. I'd recently done a demo with Ayrton and really liked their new Huracan fixtures. I really wanted to put them into the show, but first and foremost, the obligation as a lighting designer is not to only bring a vision to life, but to do it while also fitting the budget. With that said, it is always important to be a team player and always be adaptable. Now that the fixture selection had been settled, it is time to determine fixture modes. One thing I learned from the GDTF workflow is when considering a fixture, you should always check the GDTF webpage and then download the fixture profile from the website. Once downloaded, import it into your Vectorworks profile. Once imported, you can now go to the GDTF information of your fixture and select your newly imported GDTF data for the particular fixture type. If you can't find the fixture or the needed mode on gdtfshare.com, be sure to put in a request to the manufacturer or make your own and submit it to gdtf.com. Remember, Unity guys, let's keep everything in one place. 
When we needed to send some renders and video clips off to Moment Factory, it was a good opportunity to utilize MVR in a few different ways on this project. Since the new 3D pool was introduced on the Grand MA3, I wanted to use the native 3D to show Moment Factory and Billy some quick snapshots of the proposed automation positions for the lighting trusses. Now as you can see, you get a nice initial visual of the whole rig. Whenever I used to export Vectorworks with the MA2 plugin, it would only include the fixtures patch, model, and XYZ coordinates. If there were 3D objects such as your arena model, band, audience, and video screens in the drawing, you had to do a separate export for those objects, and depending on the visualizer being used, you had to export a particular format for the program. For me, I had to export my objects as 3DS files, and sometimes separately because the program could only handle a certain amount of geometry at a time being imported to it. MVR now truly gives the user a unified import to your preferred visualizer, as long as the software supports the format. The good news is that a lot of visualizer software developers are implementing MVR support to their programs. And if they aren't, let them know the reason why they should and that many others are jumping aboard with this new forward-thinking protocol. Using an MVR import into Grand MA3 not only allows a unified import, but it also allowed me to use geometry like truss and other 3D objects from Vectorworks to now be assigned fixture numbers to have quick accessibility and move them wherever I needed them to go. Another advantage of MVR is the quick turnaround you get if you need to alter the rig. As I mentioned before, when we pitch a project, budget will come into play, and you may have to change some things up. We had to look at trimming back the catwalk and automation, and eventually we had to trim some automated trusses as well. Once we got to where we needed to be for the budget again, we completed our updates back in Vectorworks. I then was ready to export a new MVR of version 2 to share with the team. After final approvals, it was time to begin programming at Upstaging with Darian Coop. I prepared shows at Upstaging headquarters in Sycamore, Illinois a few times over the years. The first few times for Lady A were with Paul Arlo Guthrie. For those experiences, we had the whole lighting rig up physically for us to program. The next time, it was video programming with Phil Newdelman for Keith Urban's summer festival season, working in a dedicated office for video programming. On my most recent visit, I spoke with John Huddleston, our account rep and good friend, about where we'd be working. He then revealed to me that we would be the first to work in their newly built previs suite featuring Vectorworks Vision. John Weston of Upstaging looked after me on several occasions at the shop and on the road, so it was pleasant to have him heading up the previs suite and wrangling data for Darian and I. As the programming process began to transpire, the last few minute changes to the rig and a couple fixture updates were needed to the rig. It was then that MVR served its purpose for the rig yet again. John simply went back to the drawing and made necessary adjustments in Vectorworks and came back with a USB stick containing the updated MVR file to load back into Vision as updates were needed. It was literally that simple of a process. Vision also helped us visualize not only the lighting, but also the show automation. In Moment Factory's creative deck, we had really nice references to go off of for both lighting truss and catwalk positions. Upstaging supplied a fixture profile dedicated to the automation in Vision, which gave us control on the Grand MA3 in two mode. We then exported video samples of each song to send to Moment Factory for review. After a week of programming, it was time to bring everything to life at Rock Lidditz for production rehearsals. Once we wrapped production rehearsals, we headed down to the American Airlines Arena in Miami for band rehearsals and opening night. I'd really like to thank Darian Coop, Wayne Quiet, and Matt Goring for watching after me throughout the design process. The professional insight and counsel really helped the integrity of the lighting design succeed. I would like to also thank all the upstaging road crew and team at the shop for helping shape this thing into a reality. So now, we have the finished product ready for the world to see. Well, actually due to COVID-19, only a few cities to see. Nonetheless, the show is public and it had so many fine features to share. And now, I would like to share some of the cool memories from the show with you all. Our first slide on the left features a video clip of our catwalk automation and a stair titan tubes on the railings during the song, Everything I Wanted. Take a look.
This look was one of the most daring points of this show, where Billy and the cameraman are all suspended over the audience with the catwalk changing different angles throughout the song. Next on the right is a still image of the song No Time to Die. This was my third favorite look of the show because it is the one song we didn't have to use content or iMag for on the main screen. So, lighting that had to be dominant here, right? Of course. When we were thinking of the look, I envisioned actually the Emperor's throne from Star Wars for some crazy reason. You know that semi curb chair that he had on a Death Star? I spoke with Tarek and James from Moment Factory, and we agreed that that was the look. After discussing that with the rest of the team, I had to really speak up for it because I knew it was a rare look we wouldn't have the opportunity to use again in the show, since we had a huge video wall in the back, and we needed to be careful about the lighting trusses impeding the show content. Billy is huge on the content visuals for the show, so it's important not to block anything, but for this one, we got to drop them low. The first slide on the left is a still from the intro, which was my second favorite part of the show. In a nutshell, the bed is just hanging there at the beginning. Then it lights up, raises to the sky. Then Billy appears and is dropped and suspended in the air. Then after the fall sequence is finished, she magically reappears again, sending the crowd into a frenzy. And then we kick off the first song of the set. By far the most intense moment. The slide on the right is a video clip of the song Bad Guy. This was the show's finale, and when all the lighting trusses were in full boogie mode. I guess I'm pretty partial to this moment because it involves the lighting design. So, why shouldn't it be my favorite? It was badass, man. Take a look. Yeah, buddy. Big shout out to our Tate Automation team as well for putting together such hard work. A lot of engineering and programming had to happen to make that beast move every night. It was an automated giant and it did its magic. Thank you, Tate. There is one word to describe the success of the future, and that word is unity. I've spoke about the importance of unity for our workflow this entire time, because I just want to stress how important it is for everyone to jump on board and contribute, however you can, to help adopt GDTF and MVR as your own. As you can see, above I pictured the MA fixture share page next to the GDTF share page. The point of it is this, just to ask you, over the years, how many places did you go to get a fixture model for your design or fixture profile for your console? Instead of going to the manufacturer page, the console page, a colleague, or a web forum, remember, you have a unified place now. It's unity that will make our jobs easier, and in general, it will make the world a better place. So, you get a little bit of unity in you, and it will be all good. Sharing the process of this lighting design's creation and how the team used GDTF and MVR has been a tremendous honor, but also bittersweet. This tour was just getting started when the shroud of COVID-19 was upon us. The pandemic eventually derailed this tour after a short period of time of being out on the road. And not up until late last year, we had to cancel it for good. There was this hope that we all clutched onto to dear life that the tours would resume and start back up. To be honest with you, I still have my sad days over all of this. We all have our unique story on how this pandemic affected us. Maybe some will have a positive outcome. Others may have not been so lucky. I just wanted everyone watching out there to know I'm thinking about you, and I hope we all can get back to work. Please just keep the faith. Even if it isn't a higher being, keep the faith in yourselves. Be headstrong and persevere. 
even when it seems hopeless. I wish every one of you the best and brightest future. I hope me being here today has shed some positive light on the new horizons we have waiting for us in the latest and greatest technology trends. Before we go, I'd like to leave you guys with one more video from the Billie Eilish Where Do We Go tour. Enjoy! <laughs> In closing, I just wanted to say thanks to Billy, Phineas, her parents, management, label reps, Moment Factory, Bill, Brian, Nicole, and the rest of our touring squad for being so supportive and just being great humans in general. It makes all this hard work worthwhile to know you're riding out there with good people, and I'm always looking forward to our next adventure. Thank you all for tuning in and feel free to reach out to me anytime through social media or email that I've listed for the Q&A section.